Hi everyone and welcome back. I'm with Jeff Gardner, the manager of the city of Plymouth. And Jeff, we were talking about uh, we were talking about water, and now let's talk about the other kind of water, the the wastewater. Okay. Absolutely. Right. And so uh, Plymouth out there is having a recycled sewer water project. And I think that's new. So right. we've actually been working on that about a year as well. We have a, a vineyard that went in next to us. You've probably seen the signs out on 16 slash 49 for Rancho Victoria Vineyard out there. Oh. It's, a, it's a JTS owned uh, project and they bought 1,400 acres out there. They planted 120 acres of grapes and they need some water. They didn't have sufficient water on site to, to irrigate all of their crop and and they have not been getting the rain as expected. They, they have a, a large pond out there, about a 60-acre pond, but they need some more water. They are continuous with our, contiguous with our mm -hmm. sewer reservoir out there. Uh, so we've put together a program where uh, through the use of our sewer water, they can drip irrigate. It's all going through the State Water Resources Control Board and Department of Health, Title 22 standards. Um, they will be able to utilize our, our sewer water, which meets those basic requirements. What's well, a good thing because basically you were just spraying that on fields, right? Uh, we, right now we're spraying it on fields. They'll be able to drip irrigate their grapes with it, which I think is a much better solution. Kind of curious, solution. how does that work? Do you wind up just putting like a, a pipeline up to the property? Or? We actually, they're going to have to build a pipeline. It's going to be about a $2 million investment for them. Oh, okay. And it's because it's quite, it's a, even though they're contiguous with us, um, they own 1,400 acres, so it's about a mile or two of pipe. And they'll also have to put in a, a um, a, a filter system, a filtration system, uh, to get all, any any solids out of out of the water. So because they're going to be running it through a drip irrigation system, uh, mm -hmm. so between the filtration system and the pipes and a couple of really large pumps, uh, we're going to pump it up and over the mountain to them, and they'll be able to irrigate their vineyards uh, during the dry season, which which will essentially use up all of our all of our water that we generate now and possibly up to you know five ten maybe fifteen years worth of growth as well well i think a lot of the cities would hope that they uh, were able to sell uh, their wastewater i think everyone so plymouth is looks like uh, that, that'll be a good thing you know i think everyone would like to emulate this and in fact a lot of places are emulating it and waste the sale of wastewater especially in southern california has actually become a viable business uh, for us uh, as these things start out in small cities or even in larger areas, uh, the first the first couple of times you do it, or the amount of water you have to use is not significant enough to become economically viable. So it's sort of a give and take situation. Uh, so in this case, we're going to be we're going to be allocating the 140 acre feet a year to them for probably a 40 year period of time, and, and that will cover their investment for the pipes, the pumps, and the filtration system. After that, and, and that the cost of the water, I believe, is somewhere around $300 an acre foot, which is somewhere in the ballpark of what recycled water is going for in California right now. There's a lot of different systems, a lot of different uh, costs associated with it, so it really varies tremendously. Other than selling it, uh, is there, um, do you save money? from uh, what it is that you were doing with it? or We will not exactly save money because we still have to pump it up to the reservoir and that's where a significant cost for us is is pumping it from our treatment facility okay. up to the reservoir. So we, that'll be on the city of Plymouth? We do to, have to treat to it still, pumping. yes, right. Okay. So so they'll be on the hook for for the cost of the pumping it from our facility to them. Okay. And there will right. be additional testing and those types of things that will have to be done. So they will they will reimburse the city for all those costs. Uh, typically what we did was take it from the reservoir, and mostly it was gravity feed at that point because it was above our spray fields. And then we would let it go out on the spray fields, and then we bring goats in to eat the grass. Okay. So it's a pretty, uh, and again, another green process where we literally and figuratively, we spray the fields, the grass grows, and then the goats or the blackberries or whatever it is, and the goats come in and eat it and keep it mowed down. So it's sort of a nice cycle, and, and then uh, it really has really worked well for us for the past several years, and, and we're looking forward to... And so about how long do you think that project would uh, will take until that starts to... Uh well, let me let, let me skip. We've got a we've got a sewer we've got a sewer upgrade. We've got a sewer system upgrade in the in, okay. the, in the in the works right now, and that's that is involved doing some collection system uh, improvements, 
and that will involve some treatment plan improvements, that will involve a transmission line improvement, and that will involve brand new irrigation uh, apparatus and pumping system out in our spray field. Uh, you're probably saying, well, if you're going to put all that in, why are you going to transfer all the water to someone else? Well, it's a benefit from us from a growth standpoint if, if we, if something were to come in, some industrial site or something and that was uh, water, water, wastewater intensive, uh, Will was to grow his brewery to the size of Budweiser, let's say, hypothetically, and we had to treat a lot more water, uh, we would then have the ability to handle that water and spray it on our spray fields as well. Um, currently, we have a system that's about 40 to 45 years old. It's falling apart. The lines are breaking. It's not automated, which means when they turn the pump on over at the, at the treatment site, they have to literally drive, get in the truck, drive around, go up to the reservoir, and open the gate valve so the water can flow into the reservoir. Okay. Now, they've been doing that since the 70s, and I'm not saying that's a bad system, but it's probably not the best system. Our new system will be all automated. Uh, we'll have cameras, they'll be, it'll be it's com computerized, it'll be run on SCADA. Uh, the transfers will be done all automatically. They'll be able to basically run it from an, an iPad or a laptop or a computer somewhere. Um, it's all going to be on a secure network uh, internally. Mm -hmm. won't be out on the, on the Internet and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a huge, and it, and it will uh, last, last the city's needs probably for the next 40 years. So we're basically putting everything in place. The only thing we would possibly need to do other than that would be is if we got more growth to increase the size of the reservoir so we could hold some more water uh, so we could spray it for a longer period of time. Okay, so that's, that's in the works? That's in the works. We got a $7 million grant at no cost to the Plymouth rate payers. And that's significant because our water and sewer costs in Plymouth are the highest in the county. And... And some would like to say the highest in the state. And I'm not sure that's true, but I know they are high. Uh, we have only 473 residential and about 100 commercial users. And it's really economy of scale when you're treating water and wastewater. And we have a very small population. We, we need a larger population economically to keep the city healthy and, and to keep our water and sewer rates within you know s some reasonable level of uh, that people would be able to afford. Right. Economics of scale is a is a really big thing in uh, to any business. Yeah, <laughs> especially in the water and sewer treatment business. Okay. So. All right. Okay. And so uh, let's talk about uh, a few more things. Why don't we go to uh, subject change uh, change subjects up a little bit and talk about the the rest hotel. Well, we've been, if you've been to Plymouth lately, you've noticed we've got some new businesses in town. We have the brewery. We have a, a Prospect Cellars, which uh, Jamie Lebenko Colburn opened up, a, a wine shop down on the other end of Main Street. And the people that own Taste Restaurant are building in what used to be our movie theater and drugstore. Yeah, we have a picture of that. Yeah. A large, so. a 16-unit 16, 16 B&B um, hotel. Uh, so we're really excited about that. Uh, we've been working with Mark and Tracy Berkner to, to move that along and get that going, and they anticipate that hopefully it'll be open by around December. Okay. Now, has anybody noticed, like, they call it the Rest Hotel, and, they're, and the, the, the restaurant is called, like, Taste? Well, yeah, that's their Simple sort of one, unique, one, uh, yeah, that's their unique moniker for their, for their enterprises. So okay. um, they already have a website up, and I'm sure they anticipate... Uh, the, the caliber of people that come up and eat at the restaurant would like right. to stay in a very nice hotel, so they anticipate on, on being able to uh, supply rooms to those people, and I think they'll be successful. They're, they're, they know what they're doing in the hospitality business. They, they certainly do. Uh, and uh, how big is a hotel? How many rooms are there? Do you know it's, a, it's only it's it 16 rooms. 16 it's rooms? only going to be 16 rooms. So okay. uh, it's not that it's, it's, so it's going to be a very nice. They It's going to be brand new, essentially. Right. They've... Uh, they didn't level the buildings that were there, but they've completely re redone them. So they're not just in, they're in the hospitality, not just the restaurant, because they have, also have, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, hotel. They have the Union Inn the up Union in the Volcano, Inn, right? too, and pub, hotel and right. pub, so, um, Inn and pub. So, yeah, no, they know what they're doing. We're very fortunate to have them in Plymouth. Really, really wonderful um, people. Uh, yeah, and, and, they, and they, they're, they know what they're doing. They know the business that they're in. And they and and they've been very successful. Oh my gosh, we're almost out of time. That. We only have like a, a two minutes left. The uh, transit occupancy tax. 
Uh, you know, I just wanted to touch on that, Tom, because in the last two and a half years, we raised our tax from 6 to 10 percent, which is about the same amount it is countywide, I believe everywhere now in the county. Okay. And, uh, and the electorate and the, and the council have gone along with putting 40 percent of it aside for streets and for promotion for the city. Okay. And in, in a couple of years, we've raised about $200,000. We're putting 100 of that into our intersection project, and the other 100 we're going to be using for promotion around town. Um, so we're looking at hopefully maybe helping the fair, helping local businesses, doing whatever we can. Okay, let's promote some of the stuff that goes on right now with the farmer's market in Plymouth, the, the right. friendliest farmer's market in Amador. I'm so happy you're saying that. We've got this awesome rotary in Plymouth called the Plymouth Foothill uh, Rotary Club. And they've been putting on the farmer's market for about five years now. Uh, Tracy Berkner remind me, I believe, that she started it almost 10 years ago. Okay. And we're really excited. This is, our again, our, every year it gets better. It's better better than ever this year. We've got more vendors, more okay. stuff, good food, great people, wine tasting. Okay, and we're almost out of time, but I want to say that's that's a, you can. Uh, they have different wineries that you can taste from every week, and also there's a small meal that you can get. We always or have take food, in. so always, that's unique, yeah. and it uh, goes into the evening time. And it's a beautiful park and families are there. Right. People bring their picnics, you know, people bring their chairs, set up in the park, get a blanket, get some food, get a glass of wine, buy some food there. There's a bakery, there's melons, there's all kinds of okay. stuff and for sale. And we're going to be cut it's off, really so I'd just like to thank Appreciate you for coming it. by and uh, giving us an update. And uh, thanks for watching TSPN. We'll see you again next time.